I so I first the way that the community for nothing was a big deal. Hey, hi, um, my name is Debra. I graduated from UT Austin. Hi, my name is Subin and I'm going to UT Austin. Hi, I'm Farzana. I go to University of uh, Texas at Austin. I am a master's student. So I've had DACA for about eight years. Um, I got it in 2012. So I first became a DACA recipient in 2012, I believe. I received my DACA when um, in 2013. I just feel like people don't really expect Asians to be undocumented or have DACA. Um, so it's an interesting like position to be in because I'll mention it to people and they'll be like, oh, I had no idea. I knew that I was undocumented, but I didn't know what that really, really meant because it wasn't something my parents really brought up because, you know, like, I don't think they really wanted to. With the resources being limited or not there at all, um, and the fear, we just sort of all distanced each other. I, I really felt like I was the only Asian, like, or, you know, Asian American doctor recipient that was kind of out there because there weren't many resources for us. And it just felt really lonely. Like, um, my sister and I, like, because my parents would always tell us, like, don't ever tell someone about your status. Like, that's, like, never talk about that. Um, and so, yeah, like, I had to always kind of keep my mouth shut. You know, it's it's like... I'm living this normal life with my friends and my family, but that burden is always on my shoulder of whether I will be able to live here the next week or not. Being an Asian American, I think it's interesting. I feel like because there's a stereotype of being the model minority. Within the Asian American community, that was kind of um, something that I had to realize like, oh, like just because like, you know, we're seen as the good immigrants doesn't mean that like I'm like, I deserve DACA more than someone else. In my undergrad, even though my application said I was an international student, I lived in America my entire life. And uh, to, to take away that identity from me was a big deal. In an ideal world, I would just like someone to just snap their fingers and I would have a citizenship and then everything would be great. Um, but realistically, um, just some sort of legislation that's kind of moving us towards a place where immigrants are are welcomed. Um, I feel like generally the the laws that are in place right now are trying to keep immigrants out. Like there's an undertone of that carrying through all the rules. Um, so hopefully in the next four years we get you know some kind of path to citizenship. That'd be that'd be great. <laughs> I think DACA is a great way and a great pathway to citizenship. Um, and there needs to be more, but it's still a start and a start is better than having nothing. If we ask for like a pathway to citizenship, like it's, it's not just for like, like DACA, DACA recipients or young immigrants, like it includes everybody. Immigrants aren't, aren't just like this mob of people here to steal your jobs and like invade this country. Like we're all human beings that are here and we have lives. Everyone, like every immigrant, non-immigrant, undocumented immigrant, everyone deserves to be treated better. Um, having a voice, having to even have a conversation about dreamers and, you know, um, DACA, it's, it's a start.